Okay, I came across this stator in my garage. It is from a one and a half horsepower A.O. Smith sprinkler pump motor. And the same type of configuration also applies for pool pumps. So I figured I'd make a video on how to test out the windings, show you how it's connected, how you can change from 120 volts to 240 volts, and also hopefully rule out some problems for you if you're having a problem with your motor. All right, so we're going to get started. Now in this case, it's a 3,450 RPM motor. The way I can tell is if you look at the windings, you can see there's a thick winding that starts right here. It's roughly 16 gauge. And it goes all the way over to this side, about halfway. So this whole thick section is one side of the winding. And then from this point right here is another thick section that goes all the way to here. So you got two of them. That's two poles, and by having two poles, that means we have 3,600 RPMs. And this one's designed to run on either 120 volts or 240 volts. Now you're also going to see a thinner group of wire right in here. It appears to be around 20 gauge, and that goes almost 90 degrees off from the main winding. It goes in here, where, this, where I'm pointing right there, and it ends right over here where I'm pointing. So it wraps back and forth in that section. So you have one side wound in that area. And on this side, it does the same thing. It goes in right here, and it ends over here. So it winds back and forth on this side. So the thinner wire is your start winding, and the thicker wire here is your main winding. Now when you look at the copper windings, they should be nice and bright and shiny like this. If they look black or burned, that's a serious problem. You overheated your winding. And the one most likely to burn that I see when I fix these is going to be the finer wire, the start winding. Now the main winding, which is the thicker copper, that will always be energized when the motor is running. And the start winding, which is this thinner wire you see right in here, now the reason for the start winding is to give the rotor the initial torque or that twist that it needs to get going. Once it gets going by altering the magnetic field in the core area here, what's going to happen, it'll reach a very fast speed in no time. And when it does, the centrifugal switch that you see here, which is being pressed on by the centrifugal mechanism, will open up the circuit. The start winding will no longer be energized, and now the main windings will keep the motor running. Now the start winding gets power from the main line flowing through a capacitor. The purpose of the capacitor is to adjust the magnetic field inside the motor in such a way to give the rotor that initial twist, the torque that it needs to get it spinning. Once it's spinning, you do not want to leave this in the circuit. It is not designed to be in the circuit. It's not a run capacitor. It will likely explode. So how this will work, this metal mechanism with the spring you see will release these two contacts. So as long as it's spinning fast, the weights are going to be pulled outward, making the contacts open. Once the motor powers off, the spring will pull back together, pushing the contacts closed. So the next time the motor is started, the capacitor will be in the circuit with the start winding and that will allow the motor to start and then once again the centrifugal switch will open these contacts and the start winding will no longer have any power in it. Now how this works this whole side right here with my finger pointing alright this whole side that wraps around that's that one side of the main winding and over there is the other side of the main winding. When currents flowing through this you have the AC sine wave you get the positive part of the waveform and the negative What's going to happen as it flows through these windings, one side is going to become magnetic north, and the other side is going to become magnetic south. Then this side will become magnetic north, and then this will become magnetic south. So you're having this switching going back and forth between magnetic poles. Now this piece right here, this is a thermal overload switch. If the motor draws too much current, or if it gets too hot, the circuit will open, allowing the motor to cool. This will automatically reset. 
So if you're having a problem that you're not getting power to the entire unit, you may want to check these contacts. There's three with a continuity tester to make sure that this is not an open circuit. If this is an open circuit, you're not going to have power feeding to the capacitor to energize the start winding when the motor is initially started. Now a sign that the start winding is faulty is, would be when you go to start up your motor, if the rotor, which is this right here, that's what the rotor is going to look like. It's cast aluminum and inside that aluminum is a bunch of laminated iron and it's made in such a way you can see the iron is angled that's to help with the with the torque with the magnetic field when the start winding kicks in so what would happen if you go to start the motor and nothing happens then you're going to want to power off and you're going to want to make sure the shaft turns freely if this rotates freely then there's a very good chance you have a faulty capacitor or these contacts are arced, not allowing the circuit to close. And the worst case scenario would be, if it still didn't work, then you likely have a burned out start winding. And I will show you momentarily how to test that. Now if you go to power up the motor and it doesn't start, you can also very carefully just grab the shaft while the motor's on and just give it a quick spin and let go. If the motor goes to full speed, you're going to know you have a problem with your start winding or the circuit feeding the start winding, which would be the capacitor, or bad contacts on the centrifugal switch. Now every time I've tried that, didn't make a difference if I went clockwise or counterclockwise. Just give it a spin, and if it does run perfectly, you know you have a start winding issue. Here's a chart showing the number of poles in a motor versus the RPM, and as you can see, the speed the RPM is also dependent on the frequency. So at 60 Hertz with two poles, you're looking at 3600 RPM. And if you have four poles, instead of having just two big windings like you see here, you may have four that are a little smaller than you see here. That would be a four pole motor. And your RPM would be around 1800. Now due to the fact that the motor has slip, and what I mean by slip is as the magnetic poles are switching back and forth, the motor cannot keep up with how fast the poles are actually switching. So you don't get the full speed out of the motor. And that's what's called slip due to the pole changes. So the 3600 RPM for two poles will actually register 3450 or close to it. And if you got four poles, it won't be 1800 it'll be closer to 1725. So the number of poles, the more you have, the less RPM you will have on the motor. So if you have a 60 Hertz motor with two poles, 3600. With 12 poles, you're looking at 600. Now I'm going to show you how this is all wired up by looking at this image right here. So on your motor, you're going to see an L1 right here. That's an L2 and that's A, and that's another image right here. I'm going to put the link to this website in the video description box. It's an excellent website. It'll help you figure out what's wrong with your pump. Now looking at this image, you're going to see that both of these windings are wired for 240 volts. They are in series. Once power flows through the overload protector, it flows into the yellow wire where it goes to one blade of the capacitor on the exact same blade of the capacitor as you can see here is the other wire it just taps off and that feeds directly into the top of one winding the bottom of this winding feeds all the way across down to the letter A and then the A here feeds into the beginning of the next winding so power into the top winding leaves the bottom into the top to complete the circuit that's a 240 volt now you can see the other wire from the capacitor right here. This one going off. That feeds to the switch, the centrifugal switch, which is right here. That's your switch. And then it feeds power into the start winding. 
So this will be energized at the start, then the switch opens, the circuit no longer gets power, and you're running on just the two main windings. Now to wire for 120 volts is very simple. Both of these windings will be in parallel. This right here is the jumper. You got one wire going to the, the overload protector. Blue is power coming in from line one right here. That's the blue wire. The yellow goes to the top winding you see right here. And the white with the black trace will then connect to the purple going into the top of this winding. The black wire used to connect to the purple, but now the black is going to go to the neutral, and the black trace will tie into the purple. So that makes them both in parallel. All right, so we're going to test the windings. We're going to check the main winding first. This is one side of the main winding right here, white and purple. That's right right around 1.2. Other side of the main winding right here. And let's clip this. And that is also 1.2. So by doing these measurements you can see black and yellow is a 1.2 ohm. Purple and white 1.2 ohm. Clearly identify the two windings. Now to test the start winding, that's the red. As you can see here, the red wire goes into the centrifugal switch, into the start winding, and then it goes to the black wire, which is leaving the main winding. So you want to test between the red wire and the black, and that would be your start winding. Then move this over to the black. Okay, and let's move this to the red. 10 ohms, okay? Now if you connect to the red and the yellow, you're going to be going through the start winding and through the main winding, and that's why you're gonna get a higher reading. It was 11.1 .1 a minute ago, but around 11. That's good. All right, now the last step is you're going to check between each one of the wires to the windings to the housing itself. You want to make sure there's no short between the windings and the housing. You're going to do that on a 20 meg setting or higher. Let me clamp on to the black. It's tight. And then you're going to rub this on an area that's not painted, like there and that should not move. You're going to go to each and every one of these wires and make sure that this meter does not give you any reading on a high meg setting. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, rate it a thumbs up, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you for watching.